Hey, everybody, we're live at Pace Studio on the road right now. Um, we're live from the cutting room in Midtown Manhattan, presented by our partners at Show X with Sophia Ray. Sophia Ray, thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it enthusiastic. Thank you so much for having us. This is JC Meyer. All right, thank you, JC. Thank you. Too many people. <laughs> Man, so this uh, sound check has sounded wonderful, and we're about to share a lot of your music with the internet. Um, all of it is from Umbral, which is coming out spring, summer. It'll yes, be out. Yes, spring, uh, spring, before the summer. That's the goal. So. Nice. So what is uh, what do you feel like sharing with us first today? So the very first song we're going to do is called La Otra. It's based on a story by Gabriela Mistral from Chile, a poet from Chile that described in perfect in a perfect way this place where I spent a few uh, moments uh, in uh, the Elqui Valley in Chile, where the sun is out and no clouds for 300 uh, days a year. And it's so um, arid and beautiful. And all this uh, experience uh, that she's describing is kind of getting rid of your old self to become this new person. And I felt, oh, how perfect. So it's called La Otra. Um, roughly translates for the other woman or more of the new woman. So I hope you like it. Era la flor llameando del cactus de montaña Era herida si fuego nunca se refrescaba Piedra y cielo tenía pies y espaldas Y no bajaba nunca a buscar ojos de agua Ojos de agua Donde hacía su siesta Las hierbas se enroscaban De aliento de su boca Y brasa de su cara Doblarse no sabía La planta de montaña Y al costado de ella robándole mi entraña se acabó como el águila que no es alimentada robándole mi entraña y las gretas de fuego al pasar me respalan cruzando yo les digo busca por las quebradas y hacer con las arcillas otra águila abrazada si no podéis entonces hoy olvidadla yo la maté y vosotras también matanla Entonces, si no podéis, si no podéis, entonces, si no podéis, si no podéis, entonces, si no podéis, si no podéis, entonces.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Yeah, thank you. So Umbral is out uh, relatively soon, late spring. And uh, where are you at in the creation process? I mean, is it done, done, ready to ship? Or are you still putting on finishing touches and final mix stuff? We are. We are almost done. Almost done. We put out a first single in December. We're going to play that song very, very uh, last in this mini set. And um, we are um, basically about to put out uh, another single that we will play soon. What, what's coming now? La Caída. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay, so the next song is a special song, special song, special song. Because what happens with this song is I wrote it a few, few years ago. Uh, my father died a long, long time ago, and I never got to write something for him. So, I don't know, this song came to me um, and decided to record it as part of this project, and it's called The Fall. So... Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Um, La caída.
<laughs> right. Yes, yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so I know that you've had you've had a chance to connect with a lot of uh, world class artists over the the course of your career so far. I mean, Bobby McFerrin, John Medeski, Pedrito Martinez, who was maybe going to do this this week. Oh, um, my yeah, friend. yeah. Um, is there? Can you think of a collaborate, like a dream collaborator, somebody Bjork. or a group that you? <laughs> Don yes. Bjork. Bring her to me. Bring her to me. I love you, Bjork. If you're listening, from somewhere, I actually one time. Um, saw her in the street in Brooklyn, and uh, I was about to harass her, like, like I just needed to talk to her and say how huge of a fan I was, and she freaked out, so <laughs> <laughs> my stalking didn't work out. Um, but yes, I love her very much. I find her to be uh, a, an incredible all-around artist, and yes, she would be quite a perfect dream come true. Did you see what she did at the Museum of Modern Art with those, uh, like the volcano and the stalactites and oh, the no, stalagmites? No, the volcano, it's like a 360 no, I need to go see that. video exhibition <sighs> things. It was maybe two or three years ago. It was incredible. No, I didn't see that. I saw her last time at the shed and it was beautiful. She did uh, this incredible, incredible uh, performance that really completely uh, killed my head and heart. So it was beautiful. <laughs> Nice. Well, I love that answer. I'm glad that I asked that question. Bjork is the right answer to that question. David go. Lynch is the other right answer, but Bjork <laughs> is definitely the right answer, too. Um, well, we would love to keep this going. We're going to hear more music. Yes. Uh, this one's from Umbral as well. So, um, yes, let me um, get out of this little guy. So the next song we're going to do is actually what's going to be our next single. It's coming out in March. And it's called Digital Beetle, Escarabajo Digital. It talks about how easily you get tangled in certain discussions, especially with your family members, you can get out of. And, uh, you know, basically like how somebody knows how to poke, you know, you in the wrong, you know, for the wrong thing. So here is Escarabajo Digital. Let me... Let me change this. But we're going to play an, an acoustic version of that song. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell them yes. what we're doing, please. Because uh, we're doing um, <coughs> music with a lot of electronics. The purpose of this music is to take all these traditional South American beats, put them into the digital world, and do our music with it. But did, we decided for a change to play that song for the first time, actually, right? The acoustic. Yeah. Well, we wrote the, the songs acoustically in, anyway. I mean, anywhere. Anyway. Um, this is the first time we're on a real stage for, God, since March? Can you get on, the, wow. on that mic? Oh, that's, sorry, that's, that's right. crazy. The effects. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're excited to show you the Escarabajo Digital version, analog, analog acoustic version. So here we go. Let's see. Ceros y unos El escarabajo digital La curva imposible en la guarda discreta Conversaciones Que no encuentran ninguna dirección Pasado, pasado, presente imperfecto Pero salte la naranja y media de ceros y unos Humo en la piedra y más Tienda al fuego Para caridad 
Thank you. <laughs> yes. Man, thank so this you, is, thank you. So JC started to talk about, um, or did talk about the uh, South American folk traditions that you guys fuse with electronic, with all sorts of other types of music. Um, can we talk more specifically about some of the some of the rhythms and some of the instrumentation that goes along with those uh, the South American flavors that you guys are bringing um, here to New York? Yeah, because I mean, there's a many rhythms. I mean, it's not a new thing to put, you know, rhythms from the world into electronic music. But there's some rhythms that we really took that I don't hear that much in electronic music, and they're completely off the grid. <laughs> so um, it's like uh, it's like you know, every region, every part of the world have their own accent when they talk, and we really want to uh, we want to create a music where we keep that authentic. And then there's a lot of uh, experimentation with it. And the songs were written originally by, with the vocal loops. And this, these are songs that were built by Sophia f with her voice and looper only. And as you could hear, <laughs> we kind of... <laughs> we kept some of those. And then we transformed a lot of it, too. Um, yeah, but it, that was the process. And uh, some of the rhythms, actually, in the one song that we're going to play next, uh, we're using uh, a few rhythms that are from the Indian region of South America, um, Waino, and another rhythm called Saja from Bolivia. It's an Afro-Bolivian rhythm. And I'm playing this instrument. It's not a ukulele. No, no, no. Uh, so it's a 10-string instrument that uh, is at least 500 years old, not the one that I have in my hands, but it was born in the Potosí in Potosí, in the, what's now Bolivia, and um, it's very much used. It's one of the, the instruments that is used the most, I think, in South America, to, because Indian music is very big uh, in Colombia, uh, Ecuador, Chile, Argentina, Peru, Bolivia, um, and we, you know, put it to use also in all kinds of circumstances, because we love it, so. Yeah, this song also has a... Something interesting, right? Because we have like a quote at the end of the song that of a style that's called chicha. Maybe we can, you can talk about. It. Ooh, <laughs> no, no, I don't know that much. I'm not from chicha. Well, is a uh, um, basically psychedelic uh, cumbia from the jungle uh, of Peru. It was born there. Surf guitars and some kind of version of cumbia uh, that's beautiful. That is very inspiring to us. And there are s several bands that are exploring it now again. It had a resurgence in current years, and, uh, and, and it's lovely, yeah. So this one is called Negro Sobre Blanco, which uh, we could translate as black on white, or basically it's a saying, it's a way of saying in Spanish to put things, to clarify things, to put things into perspective. Comenzó en la mañana de hoy Sin saber Percibió que el aire Le era hostil
su habitación. Sophia, thank you, so thank you JC. We're really, you have no idea. So happy to be here. Uh, and uh, we want to really thank you, uh, Brian and, and Andrew and everybody that uh, at the cutting room for hosting this beautiful series and uh, uh, Paste Magazine, of course. Thank you so much. Gracias. Um, yes, we hope to see you again uh, with or without a mask. But that's me only because I'm singing, huh? Don't take it too seriously. Um, hopefully, we'll see you uh, in another concert very soon. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.